guys. Welcome on in. It's another Photoshop tutorial with your boy, Mr. Kern. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, be playing a little bit with some Photoshop manipulation things. We're going to uh, remove backgrounds. We're going to do some recoloring. We're going to bring one object into another photo. We're going to do some content aware fill, which is really interesting. It's a really powerful tool in Photoshop. So let's just go ahead and hop into it. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to open up. Uh, let's see. It was this photo right here. Guy jump dancing. Apparently going to take a minute to load up. I'm going to move this thing off my screen. There we go. All right. So what we want to do with this photo is we want to remove the background because this guy's going to move into our new composition. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a copy of our background just to have something to go back to. Let's go ahead and call it copy, uh, background copy. Again, if you just right click, hit duplicate layer, it works out pretty well to make a, a, a copy of it there. So I'm going to hide my background copy. So I'm going to punch it in the eye right here and I'm gonna be working on that background copy layer. Okay, so make sure that you clicked on that one, okay? Now, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna isolate this from its background. So we're gonna choose our quick selection tool over here on the left-hand side. We're gonna hit select subject up top, because honestly, Photoshop does a terrific job trying to figure out what you're trying to select, okay? In this case, it did a pretty good job. Um, I see a couple of different uh, problems here. What we want to do with this though is we just want to click with again with our quick selection tool selected we want to click and drag through the areas that we want to keep and you'll see that there's a little plus sign in the middle of my cursor that basically means that i could just add things in so i'm going to add in that and we'll mess with the hair a little bit later i mean if you want to get really picky with it we can change it has problems with fingertips and it has problems with hair um, so you can kind of mess with that to adding things in. Now, if you add in too much, like for example, let's say if I, I did that, um, if you just hold down alt on your keyboard, you get a little minus instead of a plus. You can just drag through that and remove things. Ta-da! Imagine that. All right. Again, fingertips. We can fix those later if you want, though. Um, Anyway, so we have our selection. What I want to do with that selection is I want to, I'm going to feather it a little bit. Okay. So we're going to go to modify, select, then modify. So I'm going to modify my selection. I'm going to hit feather. And you get this little thing here. I'm going to feather it by one pixel. There we go. Um, and what that does just gives a little bit of blurriness to the background or to the, the uh, excuse me, the boundaries of your selection. Um, and that's going to come into play a little bit later on. So there we go. We have our selection. It looks nice. We're going to hit our layer mask button down here, which is the square with a little cutout circle. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Now we want to, like I said, I want to fine tune that hair because you can't, well, if you zoom in enough, you can see that the hair kind of captured some of the gray background in it. So we're going to fix that up a little bit. Um, again, quick selection tool selected here on the left hand side. We're going to choose select and mask up top. And I'm going to move my face over here. There we go. Now, in select and mask, I personally, I choose the overlay view. And what that shows me is that everything that's in red basically is not going to show up. It's going to be in our background. Okay. So if you choose view here, choose overlay. That one's my favorite to use. You can change the opacity up so that everything's like super dark gray. Sometimes I like to bring things back. So I like to pare down that, that opacity a little bit just so I can kind of see what I'm losing as well. But what we're looking for here is we're looking for this tool over here on the left hand side. Okay. And if you hover over it, it says the refine edge brush tool. Okay. Now the refine edge brush tool, what we can do is we can click and we can drag through this hair just along the top of it here and on this front section here. And you can see what it's done is it's tried to, here, I'm gonna zoom in real quick so you can actually see it. Let's zoom. Zoom, 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 enhance. Here we go, refine edge tool. 
So if I click on this with my Refine Edge tool, what it does is it tries to a little bit more um, find the actual edge, okay? You can see it's kind of cleaning up that hair there. You can just click on it. It does a pretty good job of it. Okay, so we're actually capturing the hair there. We're losing that background. Now also, you can see that there's a little bit of a gray outline around my my selection here as well. And we can fix that over here on the right hand side. Um, you can mess with the edge detection here. You can see that it tries to smart fix it, but because it's an outline around the entire thing, I'm just gonna use shift edge down here. And it's probably hidden with that global refinements arrow. But if we just bring that down, you can see that the edge comes in. Now we don't wanna go too far because then we're starting to cut out part of our photo here. But putting a minus edge on it to remove some of that outline, I think right about, uh, I think right there looks good. So I'm gonna go with a negative 15, okay? Now, this one's probably the most important part. Output settings, we're gonna hit this little arrow. I wanna to output to a layer mask, okay? So that way it automatically adds it to our layer mask that we already had. If we hit okay, then there we go. We've removed that, everything that was in, or everything that was in red looks pretty good, okay? So the other thing I want to do is I want to change the color of his pants as well. So I'm going to use my quick selection tool here on the left-hand side again. And once again, we have that plus in the middle of our cursor. And we're going to select his pants. Okay. Might need to change the brush size a little bit. And you can see that it tried to select his foot. So again, I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to remove his foot. Make sure I get the cuff of the pant. Okay, I got a little spot here, add in, remove the jacket. So you're gonna have to play around with that alt button, just kind of adding and losing things. But I think that looks pretty good. Okay, once again, so we don't have a hard edge on that selection, select, modify, I'm gonna feather it by one pixel. That should do the trick, okay? And then what I wanna do is in my adjustments tab here, okay? In that second row, first one over is our hue saturation button. And the first slider on this actually slides things up and down the color wheel. So we can go ahead and slide this this way. You can see that it's changing the paint color. Now, if we missed a selection, that would, that would have stayed blue. But we were pretty thorough in what we were picking. So I'm gonna give him some cool purpley pants. It's a good look. All right. Now you can see down here in your layers that that added a hue saturation layer. If you hit it in the eye here, you can hide that just to see where we started and where we ended up. Looks pretty clean, pretty good. Okay. Now I'm gonna move this into a different layer. So what I wanna do is I want to put these two things together. Okay. So I wanna merge these two top layers and what you can do is you can do that by holding down shift on your keyboard, clicking background copy so that you have both of them selected. If we right click now, we can merge layers, okay? So there we go. Now it's all one. I'm gonna click on the word here. If I double click the word, I can call him uh, jumping guy. Why the heck not? Okay. So next thing we want to do, I'm going to hit file. I'm going to hit open. I can move this guy literally anywhere I wanted at this point in time. So if I wanted to add him into space, I just have to open up a space background, come over here, get my move tool, grab him, hover over your new tab, drop him in. But look at him, now he's kicking through space. 